Good morning, South Bay Bible Church. Um, yeah, welcome to the first week of Lent. And yeah, there's something I was reading this week that I just wanted to share, just especially for this Lent season. Right? I think it challenged me in many ways. Um, it's this idea that in this Lent season, instead of us asking what we are giving up for God, we can ask how um, can we practice standing in solidarity with the suffering of Christ and of this world. Right? And I, I really love this, right? It, it reminds me a lot of that Galatians verse, right? I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives within me, right? And I don't know. I just love that invitation to join with Christ in the suffering of this world, right? To join with him in suffering, right? It changes the way we view this Lent season from something where we're sacrificing for God to an invitation to grow intimate with Christ in suffering, right? And for me, it's been really real this week. Um, you know, there's just been some stuff I've had to surrender, right, and to f join with Christ in that suffering, that solidarity, right? And for me, it was really, it was painful and it was hard, right? But there was also just an intimacy and a joy that came from it. Right? And so especially this Lent season, I think the first thing is just to invite all of us into that practice. Right? Uh, at the same time, though, I think um, in that place of suffering with Christ, there is often, I find, this very narrow, like, line between standing with solidarity in Christ and hitting a lot of despair, right? Because suffering is hard, right? And painful things are painful, <laughs> right? And so I think the word of the Lord for me this week has just been this reminder that while I am standing with Christ in the suffering, right, while I am crucified with Christ, the tomb is still empty and the victory is still won. Right? And that is the hope that we enter this Lent season with. Right? And so, yeah, the song we're going to sing is Christ is Risen, right? And just as we start this Lent season, I want to invite all of us just to have that, as our, as our hope, right, that the victory is won, the tomb is still empty, even as we stand with Christ in suffering. And so would you join me in worship? <laughs> Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. For I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Hallelujah! Christ is risen from the grave. Hallelujah! Christ is risen from. The The prodigal is welcomed home, the sinner now a saint. For the God who died and came back to life, everything is changed. Hallelujah. Christ is risen from the grave. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Death, where is your sting? Oh, fear, where is your power? For the mighty King of kings has disarmed you. Delivered and redeemed, eternal life is ours. Oh, praise His name forever. Hallelujah. Christ is risen from the grave, hallelujah. Christ is risen from the grave. All throughout eternity, the song will be the same, hallelujah. Christ is risen from the grave. the day you call me in to heaven's sweet embrace. I'll see your scars, your open arms, the beauty of your face. Through tears of joy, I'll lift my voice in everlasting praise. 
Good morning, everyone. I'm gonna try to wave to the camera. Hello, hello. Um, it's just a, uh, it's just really good to be with you this morning. Thank you so much for joining us. I got some feedback about my sermons uh, from someone in my family, um, and it's not my infant, and it's not my toddler who gave me this feedback. So, process of elimination on who gave it to me. Uh, but basically, they were giving me feedback about um, just being more, uh, sharing about more of the struggles that we go through as a family. (laughs) And uh, there are so many struggles (laughs) that we're going through as a family. So I'm like, how many should I share? There's so many to pick from. Uh, But right off the bat, I want to share a little bit because I just want to say it is, it's a, it's an, an act of God. It's God's grace. And it's a miracle that we're able to even have church. It's a, it's a miracle that I'm able to, to, write a sermon and and record it and deliver it it's a miracle that uh any of this is happening right now really just if you've if you ever drop by our house you'll see the chaos that is our house you'll see the 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 tornado that is our lives and wonder wow how did how how are they still breathing (laughs) like if i turn the camera a little bit this way i've some of you as we facetime you've i've shown you the mess of my office i i intentionally framed it so that you only see the one sliver of things that are presentable uh, for the service so you're not distracted um during the message um but it is a it's just a straight miracle that i'm able to even prepare a sermon each week uh, with with uh caleb he's really kind of very needy in this stage he's just three months old with zach he's two years old so you know terrific twos um determined twos or formerly known as the terrible twos we have we're basically capped out in terms liz and i uh strength and capacity um to manage and parent and and love one another even and on top of that all the responsibilities of life and so i don't know if you're (laughs) some of you might also feel the same way where overwhelmed by what's going on overwhelmed by the the things that are happening in in the world and in our culture um and just trying to live day to day trying to rely on new mercies every morning definitely there with you in the same boat so many struggles even just this week i I was scrapping around for time to to prepare this message wound up staying up super late at night and uh just staying up till like 2 a.m writing these messages And, uh, you know, it's a miracle. It is a miracle that I'm able to even do this. (laughs) And so praise, praise be to God that we are here together. And so with that, um, if you, if you ever want to see the chaos of the house, just, just FaceTime and I'll be glad to show you how messy and chaotic our lives are. I, I think it's good for us to see each other's mess. So, Um, We're in our sermon series, A Better Church, continuing in the book of Ephesians, rediscovering what church was meant to be the way God wanted the church to be by going back to scripture. And here we have a quick recap. We are adopted by God into his family, and now we find our home in Christ, and now we can know God better and better. And the reason why is because we are made alive and now we've we have uh received the grace of god we are now gonna be conduits of god's grace we pass on the grace of god to those around us and today um the thing that i want to present to us is that to be a better church we must represent a better humanity a better humanity it's a very big and kind of 
broad topic today, but it's super relevant um, to, to what I believe is going on in our society, especially here in the Bay Area. So to be a better church, we must represent a better humanity. And um, before we open up the, the text for today, I want to just commit the time to the Lord. So please close your eyes, bow your heads. Let's pray together. Let's pray. God, Ooh, I am so thankful for you, God. I, this is all because of you. Everything that our church is able to do, everything that um, we are able to, every single breath that we breathe, God, is from you, God. The the fact that this that your word is able to be preached every single week, God, it's because the the way that we are able to sing and, and even teach children about more about who you are, that's because of your grace over us. So God, help us to 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 be more aware of your grace in our lives. Help us to not take um, for granted the way that God you are are sustaining us and providing for us and caring for us help us to not take for granted God that you are not a distant God or a aloof God but God you are you 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 are you are our father and we are your adopted children and so God right now in this time we just surrender it to you uh, God I surrender this time to you may may you God do the work of ministering to your people would you God um, feed Feed your people through your word, and may everything that is of me fall away. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. So today, we are in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 11. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 11. Turn in your physical Bibles. Follow along on the screen. Go go in your Bible app on a different device. Do whatever it needs whatever you need to do to to uh, get this passage open. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 11 says this. Therefore, remember that formerly... You who are Gentiles by birth and called uncircumcised by those who called themselves the circumcision, which is done in the body by human hands. Remember that at that time you were separate from Christ, excluded from citizenship in Israel and foreigners to the covenants of the promise without hope and without God in the world. What an awesome you know, joyful passage this is. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 2, verse 11. If you remember last week, there was a very similar pattern that Paul used to write. It was a a former and now, a who we who we were, what did God do, and who we are pattern. And what we see here is that um, Paul again starts off with who we were. Who were we? So we ask ourselves, who were we? Um, Paul says, you were, verse 12, separate from Christ, excluded from citizenship in Israel, and foreigners to the covenants of the promise without hope and without God in the world. Who's Paul talking to? He's Paul. Paul is talking to the Ephesians, Gentiles by birth, people who basically were not Jewish. So if you're Jewish here, you are not a Gentile. But for every other person, if you're Chinese, if you're Korean, if you are Mexican, if you are African, you are a Gentile. And so when I read, whenever I read Gentile in, in the epistles, I'm like, yes, that's me. <laughs> and you, you have the permission too. like formerly you who are Gentiles. Yeah, that's us. We're Gentiles. We were called uncircumcised. Okay, sure. Actually, the, just kind of a, a silly aside here, the uncircumcised, um, it's not just a statement of fact, like you who are uncircumcised, you are Gentiles. Um, it's more so a, a way that Jewish people name called gentiles it's kind of a derogatory name for gentiles a little bit i would call prejudice against gentiles um so you know don't go around calling you uncircumcised da, 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 da. please don't do that <laughs> um, but if you're if you're not jewish you're gentile Woo! we're paul's talking to us and so who were we who were we let's see who we were remember that at that time you were separate from christ excluded from citizenship in Israel, foreigners to the covenants of the promise, without hope, and without God in the world. Oof, this does not look very good. We'll go through this a little bit slower. Um, you who were separate from Christ, we were distant. We were distant. Um, we were not yet saved. So uh, this is Paul talking about who we were before we were saved, before you were saved, before God intervened, before God poured out his grace upon you, who, who were you? Remember who you were. We were distant. We were distant. We were separate from Christ. You know, so if a believer, if a, a, if a church finds its home in Christ, then those who were not saved, those who do not believe, those who are not part of a church, they're they're separate from Christ. They're far and distant from 
Christ. Um, Liz and I, we go on walks now because that's all you can do these days. <laughs> and when we're on walks, we take our kids out. We, we don't leave them at home. It's not just Liz and I. We, we have two strollers or one stroller with Zach hanging off the back. Um, and we go on walks. And when we're going on these walks, I find comfort in distance. I find comfort when there's no one around me or when people are walking, but they're on the other side of the street. Or if we're walking and someone comes nearby or they're running real fast, you know, they're jogging. I'm like, ooh, let me, let me, let me get a little more space. <laughs> you know, with all this sickness around us, it makes me feel safer when there's distance. You know, but, but let's think about this in a different way. You know, we, we might have this weird relationship with distance right now in this moment, but let's look at this in the family. Because that's what we are, right? We are, we are God's adopted children. Let's look at this in the family. If my kid kept their distance from me, like if Zach was always on the other side of the house and I tr every time I tried to get to him, he just went, you know, other side. Like magnets of the same pole. If he always tried to keep his distance from me, I would just feel terrible. I know this as a father. I know this as, you know, a father of just a two-year-old. God is our father, right? And just think about God as father. The distance that was between us and God must have made him feel a certain way. Feel real bad. Feel terrible. Feel bad. We were distant, separate from Christ. The next thing is we were excluded from citizenship in Israel. We were walled off. The Even if we wanted to get in, to God's chosen people. We wanted to belong. We were walled off. We were not allowed. We were denied citizenship, denied asylum. We were walled off. You know, just thinking about the circumcision and the uncircumcised, Israel's Israelites and Gentiles did not really get along. Um, there were clear lines of, of, you know, this is them, this is us, differentiation between the Jewish people and the rest of the world, the Gentiles. There was actually hatred on both sides. The, the Jews hated the Gentiles. And when Paul was writing this in biblical times, the Jewish people were, what, under Roman or Gentile occupation. So there was this other power dynamic of oppression where the Gentiles were oppressing the people of Israel. And so now Paul's addressing us, the Gentiles, were included in that group. We were excluded from the citizenship in Israel. We were walled off, you know? Even in terms of the, the way to be a Jewish person, um, it, 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 it wasn't just a cultural thing. It invaded a lot of just their day-to-day, -day, what they ate, how they dressed, their religion, the way they worshipped. Um, and, of course, circumcision, right? This was a sign uh, that you were... Uh, given God's covenant. This is a way to show that you were a part of God's chosen people. So Gentiles were not included. They were called the uncircumcised. <laughs> you dirty uncircumcised Gentiles. They were unclean even. So there's all this animosity, all of this division that was, that was between the Gentiles, who Paul's talking to, us, and the Jewish people. We were separate, walled off from one another, excluded from citizenship in Israel. The next thing, we were foreigners to the covenants of the promise we were ignorant we didn't understand how god worked we were ignorant of the way that god works before we were saved right if before we were uh we before we were saved by god we had no idea how god worked we had no idea what it was like to to be in a relationship with God because he had not yet saved us. We were foreigners to the covenants of the promise. We the just the idea of 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 God's covenants, the idea of God's promises, the idea of who God is completely foreign to us. We were ignorant of the way God worked, but also we were hopeless without hope. And we were godless without God in the world. So what we see here, we were distant from God overall, and we lived with division. These are the things that rem Paul is saying, remember who you were. Remember the distance that existed between you and God. Remember the division that you lived in. Why is it so important to remember? Why is it so important to remember? You know, memory is a, is a really interesting thing. Um, and as, as I was meditating on this passage um it it it's almost like um 
the idea of nostalgia came to mind as I'm thinking about the season of Lent, thinking about um, <laughs> just I was talking with another pastor and they were they were actually really it was really great to talk with them. We were connecting and um, they were saying how they watched one of, you know, SBBC's services at the beginning of our lockdown um, and they were they were watching how we did things and they were taking notes and, and and trying it for their own church. And I was like, wow, that's awesome. And as we were talking, I was just remembering what was going on. And I was just, whoa, this wave of nostalgia came over me, <laughs> remembering what was happening um, just a year ago this time, how we were str scrambling to get online, how we were struggling how to just meet together on Zoom, how we were struggling to, to go get groceries and how to adjust to this, to this pandemic. And it, I was filled with just nostalgia, like, wow, that's crazy. Just re being reminded of how, how faithful our God is. See, if we don't remember, we will never have a reason to, to, to actually um, reflect and think about the, the way that God has been moving, the way that God is active, the way that, the, what is God doing in your life? If you don't remember, if you don't remember where you came from, if you don't remember what God brought you out of, you won't have any testimonies. Remembering is what we do as Christians, as a church, remembering. We don't want to ignore um, our past. We don't, re we don't want to just, just ignore the past and, and paint it over and say everything was fine, nothing to look at here. But we have to remember. At the same time, we are not, we are not, um, we're not held in bondage to our past, right? We're not held in bondage. We are not slaves to our past. We are not controlled by our past. But we have to remember. We have to remember what happened, who we were, we remember the distance that was between us and God. We remember the brokenness and division that we lived with, right? So that when we remember who we were, we will remember more of what God is doing. So what did God do about it? Verse 13, But now in Christ Jesus, you who were far once far away have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace, who has made the two groups one and has destroyed the barrier, the dividing wall of hostility, by setting aside in his flesh the law with its commands and regulations. Um, this, is, this is amazing, right? If we don't remember what, what we were before, we won't understand the breadth of what God has done for us. But now in Christ, you who were once far away have been brought near by the blood of Christ. What did God do? He brought us near by the blood of Christ. He sent his son to die on the cross for us, to be our peace, to make the two groups one. Through Christ's death on the cross, his atoning sacrifice for us, the distance has been closed. The distance has been closed. His purpose was to create in himself one new humanity out of the two, thus making peace, and in one body to reconcile both of them to God through the cross by which he put to death their hostility. He came and preached peace to you who are far away and peace to those who are near. For through him we both have access to the Father by one Spirit, what did God do? God closed the distance. How did he do it? By the blood of Christ. And now because of Christ's death on the cross, we are now reconciled because Jesus is our peace. Peace, and we have peace with God and also peace with one another. God, God closed the distance between us and him. And he brought us into peace through the cross by which he put to death the hostility, the brokenness, and division that existed between God's chosen people, the Israelites, and the Gentiles. He came and preached peace to you who were far away, the Gentiles, and peace to those who were near, to those who... To the Israelites, he came and preached peace to everyone. For through him, through Christ, through Jesus, we both, Jew and Gentile, have access to the Father by one Spirit. And that is the picture of the Trinitarian communal loving relationship that God has 
in himself that is overflowing into his his family us the church who are we now so who are we now we were far we were distant from god we were living in division and brokenness and god what did he do he brought us near through the blood of christ and he reconciled those who were far away and those who were near he reconciled jew to gentile he brought the two together so who are we now church who are we now consequently you are no longer foreigners and strangers but fellow citizens with god's people and also members of his household built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets with christ jesus himself as the chief cornerstone right so take note 21 in him the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the lord and in him you too are being built together to become a dwelling in which god lives by his spirit so we have peace with god and peace with each other we are now one body in christ but more than that we are the family and the temple and the home of god right now let's let's look at this again you are no longer foreigners and strangers you're no longer distant or separated you're no longer walled off from god but you are now fellow citizens with god's people and members of his household his family built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets talking about the old testament and the disciples with christ jesus himself as the chief cornerstone everything is dependent and finds its it's all dependent on christ jesus himself 21 in him the whole building is joined together so christ is the way that we are joined to one another and together we are the temple in the lord and furthermore 22 in christ in him you two are being built together to become a dwelling where god lives in which god lives by his spirit so the spirit lives inside of us we are now who are we we are the family and the temple and the home of god we were distant we were broken we were living in division there was all this tension but now because of what god has done through christ on the cross through his blood we are now the family temple and home of god amen but so what so what thinking about this right you can't not think about what's going on today thinking about the state of our church not just sbbc but the church in the world especially church here in america so what if we are the the family and the temple and the 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 home of god why is there so much division amongst christians why is there so much hate coming out of the church why is there so much coverage about all of this you know brokenness and division in our country just thinking about you know division division is real racism is real racial tension is real and you know hate crimes against asians and asian americans have you know i'm talking about that because that's you know look at my face like this is this is real you know hate crimes against people that look like me and people that probably look like you have gone up just in the past year oh 2808 reports just reports 2,808 reports of hate crimes against AAPI, Asian American Pacific Islanders, um, from just the beginning of the pandemic, March 2020 to the end of December 2020. Almost 3,000 re reports, just reports of hate crimes against AAPI, people that look like us. And that's just a mind-boggling number because that's just the amount of reports not the actual amount of hate crimes that existed um, that took place last year um, and just recently in the bay area um, it's made news right because of all these these um, hate crimes against the elderly in in our communities here in in san francisco and oakland chinatown you see people just attacking elderly asian and asian american people you're thinking of just these making the news because they're targeting people who are are so defenseless um even one assault resulting in 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 the death of a 
you know, a man who's 84 years old, Thai American man named Vicha Rita Tapangdi. Um, he, the racism is real, right? It's it's a huge part of the way that we, we live and the way that we, we we see what's going on in our lives. The it's a real huge part of the reality of our society. And it's, it's crazier even now, right? Because not even everyone agrees that racism is a big deal, right? Some try to deny it either like, no, it's not a real issue. I'm colorblind. It's, it doesn't matter. Um, some try to say, you know, just we got to try harder. You got to just, you know, work, you know, to do all these things and change the system and do all of these things. And some you who don't deny or don't not trying to change the system, um, some some are actually just unfortunately more and more prevalent this we see this is they lean into this racism they are they really live out their racist feelings and it's it's crazy you know you know, i've actually i've been reading about and and listening to a lot of the news that's happened this week um and it's not all been bad i've really been encouraged actually by the response especially to the the stuff here in the bay area or the attacks here in the bay area in in oakland chinatown i know I've, I've been to oakland chinatown many times i love the food there i love the restaurants there i love that parking garage right there in the middle of chinatown where the library is i, I always park there i always get some bolo bao you know there's really good bolo bao there and there's like the shooting star cafe i love oakland chinatown it's so good um went off on a mini tangent there <laughs> my love of oakland chinatown but the the people in the community are banding together they in oakland volunteers are, are are banding together to walk with the elderly um you know in this pandemic they're masked and they're distanced they're, they're just like if anyone needs you know company if anyone needs like a escort around oakland chinatown to feel safe um just let us know and we will try to walk with you we want to walk alongside you so that you feel safe i love this this is awesome i encourage this action and you know rise up and 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 you know protect those who are are vulnerable that's the heart of the gospel but that's that's the tip of the gospel the gospel actually goes even deeper the gospel calls us to go even further right not just to defend those who are like us who are the ones being assaulted but where does the gospel what is the gospel for it's for the people actually who are attacking too all right we'll keep going here Ephesians chapter 3, verse 1. For this reason, I, Paul, the prisoner of Christ Jesus, for the sake of you Gentiles. Let me stop there. What we see here is Paul is in prison now because he is preaching the gospel to the Gentiles, to the enemies of his people, because he knows that the gospel is going to to be expanded to the gentiles verse 2 surely you have heard about the administration of god's grace that was given to me for you that is the mystery made known to me by revelation as i have already written briefly in reading this then you will be able to understand my insight into the mystery of christ what is the mystery of christ which was not made known to people in other generations as it has now been revealed by the spirit to god's holy apostles and prophets what is the mystery verse 6 this mystery is that through the gospel, the Gentiles are heirs together with Israel, members together of one body, and sharers together in the promise uh, in Christ Jesus. This is the mystery of Christ, that through Christ, Gentiles are heirs together with Israel, members together of one body, sharers together in the promise in Christ Jesus. This is incredible. Just think about all the ways that, that Jews had to, to eat and behave and live and wash and, and keep themselves clean from the defilement of the Gentiles. To be kosher meant to not interact or do anything that a Gentile would touch. Now we see the mystery of the gospel, that all of those laws are, are fulfilled in Christ and Jews are heirs together with the Gentiles. They are together with Israel. It's crazy. God's chosen people are now the Gentiles and Israel, they're members of the same body. How could this be, right? Jews, Jews were commanded by God to be set apart, to be, to be clean, to be holy, to be different from the Gentiles. But what we see here is that salvation is from the Jews. Christ came from the line of David. And now through the Jews, through this chosen people, Jesus came into the world. And the entire world through them was given salvation. We Gentiles have salvation. I read this and I, as a Gentile, I'm just so thankful for God's love and the mystery, the revelation of God's will to include us into his family. But what we see here is that 
the gospel goes even deeper, even deeper than just um, protecting those who are vulnerable that look like us. Verse 7, I became a servant of this gospel, Paul's talking here, by the gift of God's grace given me through the working of his power. Although I am less than the least of all the Lord's people, this grace was given me to preach to the Gentiles the boundless riches of Christ and to make plain to everyone the administration of this mystery, which for ages past was kept hidden in God who created all things. Right? Paul's aware of the grace of God, right? Verse 10, his intent was that now through the church, the manifold wisdom of God should be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly realms according to his eternal purpose that he accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord. Verse 12, in him and through faith in him, we may approach God with freedom and confidence. Verse 13, this is the key part here. I ask you therefore not to be discouraged because of my sufferings for you, which are, which are your glory. And that is, that to me really stood out. That to me is the heart of the gospel. Paul, so shaped by the way that God has shown grace to him, he is now a conduit of the grace of God to those who are not even remotely close to him. The Gentiles, those who are unclean in his old way of thinking. Now he is in prison because of them. He is suffering for their sake. Do not, he's telling them, do not be discouraged because of my sufferings for you. Do not be discouraged because I'm in chains for you. This is your glory. I die to myself because of God's grace in, that he's given to me that I want to impart to you. That is who we are. We are now a people who, ex, who represent a better humanity. Not just protecting those who look like us, standing up for those who are, who are attacked and assaulted, the elderly in our community. That is, that is the bare minimum of what it means to be a good person here on earth, right? That is nothing. That's just basic decency, right? But the gospel goes much, much further. It goes further to even reach to those who are assaulting our elderly. That is the reach of the gospel, where the peace is extended, breaking down the walls of hostility. I know this is really, really relevant, and it might be too soon to some of us, where it's like, what? No, justice. We need to see these people behind bars. We need to see, you know, retaliation or, or people, like, pay for what they've done. Too soon, too soon. But this is the gospel. This is what it means to make that Christ died on the cross to make two groups one, to make peace that is how deep this gospel goes. We die, we lose our lives for our enemies. We lose our lives so that those who are unlike us can live. This is the new humanity. This is the better humanity that God intends for his church to represent. So we need to pray. We need to go after this. We need to seek the Lord for this, that we would be a people of peace, not just a people of, of comfort, a people of like-mindedness, a people that you know all get along because we look alike and have all the same interests. We need to be a people of peace who have received the grace of God and live and live, live so that others can also receive that grace. Let's pray. God, I just... Oh, God, make us, make us like Paul. Make us like Paul to have that heart, to have that experience of your grace, God, to know who we were, how much you have done to close the distance so that, God, our lives will be transformed so that when we see other people broken by the wayside, we have to go to them and extend this grace to have mercy and compassion towards them. God, make us a people of peace. Make us a better human. Make us more like your son. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Let's worship. In the crushing, in the pressing, you are making new one in the soil and I surrender you are breaking new ground in the crushing in 
the pressing You are making new one In the sorrow I now surrender You are breaking new ground So I yield to you and to your careful hand when I trust you, I don't need to understand. Make me a vessel. Make me an offering. Make me whatever you want me to be. Came here with nothing but all you have given me. Jesus, bring you one out of me. In the crushing, in the pressing, you are making one. In the soil. are breaking the ground. You are breaking the ground. So I yield to you and do your careful hand. When I trust you, I don't need to understand. Make Jesus, bring you 